Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of biological molecules, and in particular, on inorganic ions. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson 8 of 8 in this tutorial, Inorganic Ions. This is the final video in our series of 8 lessons on the topic of biological molecules. In the last lesson, we looked at water and its importance as a solvent for reactions. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. First, we will look at the formation of ions, ions that can be found in bi the body, and those that are relevant in biology. Here are the AQA specification points we'll cover in today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a quick read through them before we begin. The first point is to look at inorganic ions. Here's an atom. It has no electrical charge. Ions can be positive or negative. Cations are positively charged ions, formed due to electron loss. Anions are negatively charged ions, formed when an atom gains electrons. An ion is a particle with an electric charge. Ions are formed when an atom transfers its electrons to another atom. These ions can be either positive or negative as we've just seen. A cation is a positively charged ion and an anion is a negatively charged one. Ions can be organic or inorganic. An organic ion will contain carbon. An inorganic ion doesn't contain carbon. In this tutorial, we're mainly going to focus on several key inorganic ions in the body. These ions can be found in the cytoplasm or in the bodily fluids of organisms. Iron concentrations can vary. Some ions are found in very high concentrations, whilst others are found in low concentrations. The body carefully regulates iron levels through organs such as the kidney. Now we will focus on the different ions in the human body. There are four main inorganic ions we will be focusing on today. First of all, before we go through them, can you name the functions of iron? Even if you don't know, pause the video now to make an educated guess. Iron is used to carry oxygen. Let's look at it in some more detail. Iron ions are primarily found in red blood cells in the protein called haemoglobin. The iron ions, Fe2+, are actually the ones that bind to the oxygen atoms, which makes it crucial for the survival of most organisms. What are the functions of hydrogen? These ions will maintain the pH and help with aerobic respiration. Enzyme-controlled metabolic reactions are sensitive to pH. Hydrogen ions are important for regulating pH in organisms. The greater the concentration of the hydrogen ions, the lower the pH. The lower the concentration of the hydrogen ions, the higher the pH. For example, H plus ions 
help to maintain the low pH of gastric juices within the stomach for digestion. The protease enzyme, pepsin in the stomach, needs acidic conditions to work well. Also, the low pH helps to sterilize the food and kill off bacteria. Additionally, H plus ions are important in ATP synthesis in the mitochondria during cellular respiration. There is a low concentration of hydrogen ions in the mitochondrial matrix and a high concentration in the mitochondrial membrane. This leads to a proton gradient, which is used to generate energy. Don't worry about what's going on here for now. We'll learn more about this mechanism in later tutorials. What are the functions of sodium? Sodium ions are responsible for co-transport and they are also important in the nervous system. Sodium and potassium ions are very important in the nervous system and for communication between the neurons. Sodium helps molecules such as glucose and amino acids cross the cell membrane in order to enter the cell through a process called co-transport. A great example of co-transport is in the digestive system. As we will learn in a later tutorial, sodium plays a key role in helping glucose be absorbed in the small intestine. What are the functions of phosphate? We can see here that phosphate is used in the cell membrane and also in DNA, RNA and ATP. Phosphate ions are often found attached to many biological molecules as phosphate groups. Phosphate groups are found in DNA, RNA and ATP. In ATP, the energy is stored in the phosphoanhydride bonds between the three phosphate groups which make it up. During respiration, the chemical energy stored in foods is converted into ATP. This stores the energy in a readily available form. Phosphate groups can be added to molecules to make them more reactive through phosphorylation. The phospholipids are key components of cell membranes, forming the phospholipid bilayer. This diagram shows how a cell membrane is structured. Again, we will go into more detail in a later tutorial. We've now covered all the specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything that you feel unsure about. We have now completed lesson eight. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of the topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-level biology series or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.